Hello, all my Capricorn friends. This is Maxine Taylor, and I have your astrological forecast for the month of May. First of all, as we all know, Mercury is retrograde. <laughs> I mean, do I have to tell anybody on this planet? Um, anyhow, it's going to go direct on the 14th. Yes. So you're going to tie up all those loose ends between now and then. Do not start a new project on a retrograde Mercury. It will either fizzle out completely or have to be redone within the year. Don't do it. It ain't worth it. Okay. Now, what happens is after Mercury goes direct, it moves into the shadow. And in the shadow, Mercury acts like it's retrograde. And so it... it it's, it's an opportunity to tie up the loose ends that you didn't tie up before when it was retrograde, but it feels so much like a retrograde that it's almost like, well, you think you are. You think it is still retrograde and you're still involved in it. No, do your best. After the 31st of May, Mercury will be out of the shadow and you'll be able to move forward without feeling the that feeling you've got when everything's retrograde and no matter what you touch, it seems to break, you know, that type of thing. All right. So let's talk about this beautiful chart that you've got. First of all, Jupiter, the greater benefic is in your home and family area. This is a beautiful place uh, for um, expanding your home uh, or just plain enjoying your home and your family. So uh, this is beautiful. On, on the 16th, uh, Jupiter moves into your fifth house of fun and games. And this is great. My suggestion is party and play and enjoy. If you have kids, spend time with them because that's the fifth house of children. If you don't have kids if you, and you have pets, they qualify as a child. In my book, they do anyway. Um, you might say, well, have you rewritten astrology? Um, yes, several times, actually. But if you love your pets, they and they, they really are your babies, of course you're going to look at that fifth house. Now, the sun, the yellow planet, is in the fifth house. It's been there. You've been partying or wanting to party for some time. And your children have been the center of your life. On the 21st, the sun moves into the sixth house and you're focused on your work and your health. Great. Mercury is still, oh, oh and the sun in the sixth makes you a leader at work. Uh, Mercury sitting in that sixth house. It's gone direct, but it's still sitting there. Mercury is the planet of communication. So what this means is that you've got all kinds of ideas and you're sharing them. Beautiful. Venus, the planet of love and money and beauty, has been in your sixth house. And so you've been enjoying your job, your daily activities. On the seventh, it moves into your seventh house and you're ready to get out there and meet somebody. If you are already um, established in a relationship, you're going to want to spend time with them, more time than ever. Because Venus is love, and that's what you're attracting to you because that's what you're sending out. Now, Mars, the red planet, is what we fight with and fight for. So you could have a love-hate thing going on in your relationships, perhaps with different people, perhaps with the same person. But wherever Mars is, that's what comes first to you. And partnership comes first. I think it's beautiful. On the 20th, Mars moves into that eighth house. And you will be, um, you'll be able to look at whatever or whoever you're angry at and work through that. Because the eighth house is the house of secrets, and transformation and transmutation. And Mars is one of the rulers of the natural eighth house. And so um, 
what happens is everything in the eighth house is suppressed, all right? That doesn't mean it goes away. So you're looking at what is upsetting you or unsettling you, particularly when it comes to mutual finances. And psychically, you're going to dig deep. This is great. Now, on the 5th, we have an eclipse. It's in 15 Scorpio. It's in your 11th house of friends and groups and humanitarian projects. Um, we feel the effects of an eclipse a good week to two weeks before it occurs. So we're already feeling this eclipse. Um, and it stays with us till the next pair of eclipses come along, which is so fascinating. But it's at its peak three to four months after it occurs. So get ready for social life involving friends, maybe of a humanitarian nature, groups of a philanthropic nature, friends, and you being a friend. And this, of course, will be with us till the next pair of eclipses in October. Now, two weeks after the eclipse, we have a new moon. And that's when everything starts growing, the energy. It's on the 19th. It's in 28 degrees of Taurus. And it's back in that fifth house of fun and games. Have a blast. Have a blast. Love it, love it, love it. So your social life and your job and your health look very nice. Come back next month. We'll do it again. Till then, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.